Chinese Canadians have contributed so much to the country. We already know about their foundational contribution in building the railway, which made Canada possible. Without the railway, there would not be a Canada. And Chinese laborers made that possible. They suffered a very heavy price because of the difficult work they had to undergo. And they did it under conditions where they were not even treated as citizens. In fact, as we all know, for many years, the Canadian government imposed a tax on Chinese coming into the country. At its peak, the so-called head tax was $500 per person, which was a lot of money back then. But even worse than the head tax, the Canadian government decided that they were not, the tax was not sufficient to stop Chinese from coming. So they reached for the Chinese Immigration Act of 1923, which stopped all Chinese immigration from coming to this country. That is why many of us call the Chinese Immigration Act the Chinese Exclusion Act. But you know, the other aspect of the Chinese Exclusion Act is not just that it stopped Chinese from coming. It also required all Chinese in the country to register. Every Chinese person had to report to the government and get a certificate within one year of the act being enforced. And if they did not do that, they face fines or jail and or deportation. That is why the Chinese Immigration Act, which is also known as the Chinese Exclusion Act, can also be called the Chinese Registration Act. Now, since that time, Chinese Canadians have made so many contributions to this country. Even during the Chinese Exclusion Act, there were Chinese who fought in the war for Canada, even though at first they were not allowed to serve in the military, even though they were not citizens. Because of their sacrifice, Canada changed its policy, repealed the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1947, and allowed Chinese Canadians for the first time to become citizens of this country. As we all know, since that time, there are so many, so many famous Chinese Canadians, successful Chinese Canadians in all fields of endeavor, from business to culture to sports to medicine, science, to politics, every field you can name. Too many for me to go through the list. But I will say that there is one area that Chinese Canadians are not well represented in, not yet, and that is in the leadership positions of our establishment institutions, the courts, major corporate boards, major hospital and university administration positions, major government crown corporation positions, and most of all, in the parliaments and legislatures of this country. And we have to understand why Chinese Canadians are still afraid or reluctant to enter into political life. The reason is because they have always felt that it's a dangerous position to be in. And recent events in this country have reinforced the feeling that Chinese Canadians who enter politics are vulnerable to criticism and attacks that other Canadians do not face. We have to overcome this problem. We have to push back on all unfounded, unverified, unjustified claims of disloyalty on the part of Chinese Canadians. And we have to tell Chinese Canadians that in spite of all these attacks, they should vote. They should vote in even greater numbers. They should not be afraid to hold whatever views they hold as long as they are legal. And they should not be afraid to take part in politics so that their voice can be heard in this country as well.